Welcome to CSG View, our online portal for managing, configuring, and monitoring CSG routers. In this video, we will go over how to use key features of the portal and answer any frequently asked questions. Let's start with how to log in to CSG View. The first step is to go to csgview.com. There, you are asked to log in. After purchase, you are emailed login credentials. Please log in and register your account within seven days of receiving your email. If you never receive the email or the credentials are expired, contact CSG support and we will be able to provide you new login credentials. Once you log in, you will see the dashboard. On the top of the dashboard, you will see the device status panels. These panels will show you the number of devices that are online, offline, unsynced, and deactivated. On the left side, you will see the portal menu. At the center is the map where you can add pins for departments and groups. How to monitor routers. If you want a list of all devices, click on the devices icon on the left menu. While on the device list page, you can sort the devices by name or online status. If you want more information on a specific router, click on its name while it's in the device list page. You will be navigated to that router's data profile where you can learn information like telemetry data, memory usage, battery life, load average, and uptime. The modem will need to be powered on and connected to access this information. How to rename the router. From the devices page, click on the manage button on the far right column on the same row as the router you want to rename. Then click edit device info. In the panel that pops up, you can change the name of the device. Hit the Confirm button to apply the change. How to update the router firmware. From the Devices page, select all routers of the same model that you want to update by checking the box to the left of the router's name. Next, click on the Upgrade button and then Update Firmware. In the panel that pops up, you can schedule updates by toggling on the Scheduled Running, then selecting a date and time. Select which firmware you want to update the routers to by selecting the version dropdown and clicking on the desired firmware version, then hit Next. In this panel, confirm the information, then hit Apply. How to create and manage groups. Groups cluster devices together, making it easier to monitor or alter many devices at the same time. You can apply settings templates to a group and all devices in that group will change to those new settings. From the dashboard, click on the Groups button on the left menu. Depending on how many groups you have, this page may take a second to load. Click the Add button in the top right of the Groups page. Give the group a name. Select which devices you want in that group and which firmwares for the group. Then click Confirm. After creating the group, you will need to add devices. To do that, click on the Device button on the left menu. On the device list page, select one or multiple devices using the selection box on the left of the device name. After you have selected every device you want in the group, click on the Manage button on the bottom right of the page. Then click the Move to Group option. A panel will pop up with all of the groups, as well as an option to make a group. Pick the group you want the devices in, then confirm. Departments are used for device management. A department compartmentalizes access and user privileges to different devices and groups. For example, if you want somebody to be an admin of a specific selection of devices and not your full device list, you would use a department. To add a department, go to the Administration button on the left menu, then click Departments in the drop-down. Click the Add button in the top right. Give the department a name, and optionally, you can add location and coordinates, and a pin will be added to the dashboard map. To add a person to that department, go to Members and click on the person. Hit Modify and move to the department. Select the department in the panel, then click Apply. To add devices to a department, click on the devices on the left menu. Find the devices you want and select them by checking the box to the right of that device. Then click the Manage button and then click Move to Department. Select the department in the panel, then click Apply. How to add an admin. Every account that is created has an owner. By default, only the owner and other admins can add people and make them admins. To do this, go to Administration, then click on Members. Once there, click Invite on the top right of the screen. Add the user email in the New Member section. 
and then set the invitation expiration. Then hit next. If the user's email is already registered in CSG View, they will be automatically added. If not, a window will pop up reminding you that the user will have to hit register and then will automatically be added after completing registration. Hit the continue button on the reminder. In the modify members section, click on the roll dropdown and select admin. Then hit apply and the invite email will be sent over to the user. All they have to do is click on the email in the link and follow the instructions. How to add or change user roles. Click on the administration and then roles. By default, you should only have the admin role. To add more roles, click on the add a new role button. Give the role a name. Next, go down the permissions list and toggle on every permission you want that role to have. Then hit apply and save the role. Now, when you go to the members page on the administration section, you can click on a member hit the Modify button on the same line as their name and assign them a new role. Click the Apply button to lock in the change. How to add notifications. From the dashboard, click on the Notifications button on the left menu. Then click on the Add button on the top right of the window. In that panel, you can select one or multiple devices, then hit Next. In this panel, you can select to be notified if WAN status goes offline. Here you have the option to choose when to be notified depending on the length of the outage. A new device plugs into the WAN port. Low battery status. You can further set battery threshold if you want to be notified when the battery hits a specific percentage. In high battery temperature, you can further set the temperature you want to be notified. After toggling on what you want to be notified for, hit next. Now select the user or users who will receive the notification, then hit Next. Lastly, you can set what the alert email will look like. Hit Apply to lock in notifications. How to change the Wi-Fi password. From the device list page, find the router you want to change and click on its name. That will pop up the data profile. Scroll down to the Wi-Fi status section. Hit Modify under the desired Wi-Fi change the password in the text box labeled Wi-Fi key. Then hit apply to lock in the password change. To change the password on multiple routers, you will need to create a settings template. Click on the settings template button. From the settings template page, click on the add button in the top right. Give the template a name and set which device and firmware. Hit next. In the next panel, click on the Wi-Fi you need to change. Enable the Wi-Fi, select the Wi-Fi security, and type in the password. Leave all other fields blank. Hit the Check Settings button. Hit Confirm to save the settings template. Next, hit the Groups button on the left menu. Check the box to the left of the group name. Then hit Settings, then Apply Template. Select the settings template, hit Preview, and then Apply. How to create a guest network. Starting from the dashboard, click on the Devices page on the left menu. From there, find the router you want to affect and click on its name. This will pop up its data profile page. Scroll down to the bottom of that page and there should be panels for 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz Wi-Fi. On the top of those panels will be a tab for guest Wi-Fi. Click on that tab. Once turned on, you can change the password and guest Wi-Fi name. How to remote connect to a router. Click on the Online Devices panel at the top of the dashboard. This sends you to the device list page already sorted to show online devices. There, select the device you want, click on its name, and load the device's data profile. Then, next to the device's name, there is a remote GUI button. A window will pop up asking you to confirm firewall settings. If you haven't made any changes to the firewall, you do not need to change anything and can hit the Confirm button. After a few seconds, a tab will open with the admin panel for the device. Use the admin password. The default is the last eight characters of the serial number. Then hit login. That was just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to everything CSG View can do. If you have any specific questions, please reach out to our support team at support at thisiscsg.com or call us at 800-613-2218.